I'm JT Masit. I'm with Cara Ready Mix Concrete Association, otherwise known as CRMCA. We're here discussing the procedures for the Concrete Strength Testing Technician Certification through ACI. ASTM C78 measures the flexural strength of properly cast beams using a three-point loading system, where the lower two points resist tension against a vertical compression load. Before beginning procedures for testing beams, verify the beams have been cast following ASTM C31 procedures. Curing properly is also important for accurate testing results. Rotate the beams so that the molded top surface is to one side, allowing a smooth surface to be in contact with all of the loading points. Make sure there are no obvious protrusions at the edges lengthwise that would interfere with the loading. Center the beam on the lower loading blocks and upper compression point or points. Apply pressure onto the specimen to about 3 to 6% of the expected ultimate load. At this time, don't increase or decrease the load. Just stop and check the loading points at each of those locations. If the gaps are more than 0.004 inches, but less than 0.015 inches over the length of one inch, damp leather shims can be used across the full length of the contact surface, or the beam should be removed and ground down or capped. Shims cannot be used if the gap is more than 0.015 inches. Once the loading points are corrected for gaps, continue loading at a constant speed without shock. Apply this load at a rate between 125 and 175 pounds per square inch per minute. As you see here, Caesar's machine reads off between 1500 and 2100 pounds per minute on the loading screen. Make sure to keep the testing specimen moist during preparation and testing. Keep this rate until full rupture of the beam specimen. As a reminder, just make sure that any ASTM procedures that you're reviewing online are up to date, typically within the last two years or so. So with that, is this one? Remove the broken beam and verify the break is within the middle third of the beam length. If the rupture occurs outside the middle third of the beam, by more than 5% of the beam length, the test must be discarded. Take three measurements each direction at the rupture point. The measurement should be at each edge and at the center, both vertically and horizontally as the beam was oriented for testing. If capped, the capping material should be included in width and depth measurements as applicable. Now to run through the calculations and the report. There are two general scenarios to determine the modulus of rupture. The first is if the beam breaks within the middle third of the length. The second is if the beam breaks outside the middle third by less than 5% of the length of the beam. Calculate the modulus of rupture to the nearest 5 pounds per square inch or 0.05 megapascals. Report all the pertinent information, including the beam identification information and age, maximum load, measurements, and calculation results, curing methods, and surface corrections. If you are a CRMCA member in Colorado or even within the region, don't hesitate. Email me. Let me know your questions, and hopefully I can answer them pretty quickly and accurately. And again, thank you for watching, and thank you to Caesar for helping us out in the lab.